During the American Civil War, millions of these paper and skin and sometimes foil cartridges were made for use in percussion revolvers. And uh, there are a lot of methods of making them even back then. Uh, still today, people use a lot of different methods. Some involve cigarette papers and other things. Um, this is based on the specifications and techniques that Bulis Nemet, a uh, Hungarian shooter and historian, has uh, detailed on YouTube. And uh, he's uh, the Cap and Ball channel, all spelled out. And so he gives the Army Ordnance Department specs for the mandrel and the rolling process from the Civil War. And I'm going to take that and modify it a little bit and uh, show a little bit more of the technique, perhaps. Anyway, this is how they would have looked, more or less, back then, with the bullet glued in and the nose exposed. I do mine a little bit differently. I don't use glue on the bullet. Uh, I twist it over and it leaves this little tail. And there's a very good reason for that, which we'll get into later. Anyway, the process is the same. I use a pattern, the same as was indicated on the pat cap and ball channel right here. But you can see I cut the paper a little bit longer than the pattern, and that's to, to leave this uh, pull tab, I call it a pull tab or a twist tail, on the end of the cartridge. Same pattern, just cut, a, cut the paper a little bit longer at the wide end. So we'll get started. Here's my mandrel. It's a little bit longer than it needs to be, but it's not important. One of the little end caps. By the way, this paper is all the same for the end cap and the main cartridge case. It's from a curling paper, also known as end wraps, also known as perm paper. This happens to be a uh, Mariana brand. I just, it's what they happen to have at Walgreens when I asked for perm papers. And they seem to work great. Very light, very thin, and strong enough to do the job. So we'll just get started here. And take the little end piece, center it on the top it down and just sort of roll around it. Take one of my pre-cut papers. I use this white line on the backing paper. I use this backing paper to keep the glue off the table. It's that simple. I use a little white li or, uh, black lines on there because the uh, cartridge paper can sort of get lost visually in the white background. So that black line lets me know right where the edge of the paper is. And glue small end and down the right hand side in this case. Take that off, put the glue side toward the mandrel, line it up with the end more or less, and we're going to wrap, pull it around the tapered portion of the mandrel, which is about from here to here. I'm going to just pull that tight and roll it, slick it down, and I kind of use this as a loading block. It's, uh, what is it, MTM Case Guard 44 Magnum Metal Cartridge Storage Box. It works for this. Do one more. I'm just going to do five of these in real time. So if I mess up, you can see how, maybe what could be done about it. I move to a different section on the paper that's doesn't have wet glue on it. One side, two sides. Line up the end. Pull it over the taper. Slick it down. There's two. Once you get going with the rhythm of this, you can crank these out at a pretty high rate. I maintain that it's faster, probably faster than reloading metal cartridges when you consider collecting your spent cases, storing them, sorting them, cleaning them, decapping, inspecting, measuring, trimming, all of that. 
there's actually a, a fair amount of time that goes into reloading your spent cases. These more or less burn up in the chamber and there's no brass to contend with. I'm not saying it's a better system, obviously it's not, but paper cartridges are not that much inferior to metal. And of course when reloading a revolver you don't have to eject cases, you just go straight to loading. Now this paper is not treated. There's been a lot of talk about using nitrated papers, which I believe was done in the 1860s. I use these just as they come out of the box. And most of it gets burnt up or blown out with each shot, but it always leaves a little bit behind. Just the other day I fired over a hundred of these, however, without cleaning. And yes, there was a fair amount of little shred or shards of paper in the chambers of the gun afterwards, but it never caused a problem. I got 100% emission all the time. So I don't bother nitrating. If I, I figure if I can get off over 100 shots without any maintenance whatsoever, and they all go off cleanly, or smoothly I should say, black powder is dirty, then that's all it needs to do. Okay, those are five cases ready to load. I'm using a Lee powder measure. They say it's suitable for all types of powder. So I assume all types means black powder. It's polymer, so it's a non-sparking design. So I don't worry about it. It seems to work fine. I have it set up to dispense 30 grains of black powder, and that's verified by weight. Or an equal volume of a black powder substitute will work well also. I'm tapping on this because maybe I'm a little OCD, but I notice that when I tap on it like this, I get more consistent throws from this powder measure. The spout did have a flare on the base for use with metal cases. I just cut that off so it fits inside these paper cases uh, a lot more convenient. Okay, there's five cases charged. And at this point, you can put just about any kind of projectile, round ball. I'm using the Lee 200 grain conicals here. Whoops. And these have been, excuse me, these have been sized and lubed to fill the grease grooves and to get the size consistent. That's five of them right there. These are sized to 0 .450 inches for use in the Pieta uh, Remington revolver. And here's the trick here. One of the tricks with as much depth uh, the ball or the bullet has to go down through. It would be quite a chore to try to work that greasy bullet down and keep it aligned because uh, it just bunches up and whatnot, but it's actually pretty easy to grab the nose by forceps and just lower it right down in there. And there it is. Now there's a little space because I want it to fit tight in there. That can just be pushed down a little bit, right up against the powder. And there it is. It's tight paper will kind of stick to the grease and just twist the end. There's no glue in this case used on the bullet. Now back in the day they used a lot of gum arabic, probably other adhesives, but right there it's just the twist and a little bit of grease and that will hold together plenty well um, until you get it out to the range and load it. Another thing that I've been doing is I've noticed there's not nearly enough grease in that grease groove bullet 
to keep the powder fouling soft enough so that it gets all blown out with each shot. So you'll see there's actually a lube cookie between the powder and the bullet. And that's about an eighth of an inch thick, maybe a little less. This is Gatofeo number one lube. It's a mixture of lamb's tallow, beeswax, and gulf wax, or um, what is it made of? What is gulf wax? It's uh, paraffin wax. Look up Gatofeo, one word, ugly cat, number one, and you'll find the recipe. So here's some lube cookies. So here's another way you can do this. I just take the flat end of an unsharpened pencil, stick it on there, push it right down on the powder, and then add the bullet. You could do the same thing with a round ball, either way, with or without. Nice thing about the grease, other than keeping the powder fouling soft and keeping your gun running, which this will do, like you say, I fired over a hundred of these the other day and everything ran fine and I got a good group for accuracy afterward. But the grease cookie also keeps the projectile off of the powder and therefore prevents powder granules from getting between the bullet and the paper case. It, it keeps it a little bit easier to load. I'll do a couple more of those. And you can do these in a batch process. I'll usually do 10 at a time and just uh, insert all 10 bullets and then start twisting. I don't know why I'm deviating from that, but mainly just want to show the technique. It's kind of burnishing that paper down. Give it a good hard twist. And it's ready to load into the gun. Just about out of lube cookies today, so... I'm not going to lube all of these cartridges. I'll go ahead and insert this one. See, there's grease on the bullet. That's okay. The idea is you want to go straight down. And it's easy. The forceps. When I started using that technique, it made a huge difference. That's kind of the secret to making this longer twist tail cartridge case work. Still haven't told you why I really want these twist tails on there. Pull tabs as I call them, but you'll see in a minute. And this one has no lube cookie in it. I have to squeeze the bullet a little farther down to get to the powder. So it's tightened up and then twist. Alright, well there's four, what, five cartridges ready to load. Now the reason, I'm going to get up here, the reason I use the pull tab is this cartridge belt box which holds 40 cartridges just like that you know when you're wearing it they're right there you just grab that pull tab pull it out and you're ready to load if these bullets were like that I don't know I, I can't get that out of there <laughs> so for a matter of space efficiency that would work but you don't want to have to use forceps at the range right so the pull tab makes all the difference. That's what makes this design work. And it's small enough, it's reasonably similar to the Civil War military cartridge box, only this holds 40 rounds that are all easily accessible. And that's the reason for that. So between making it work in this and not needing any glue to hold the bullet in, twist tail design is for me. And so now it's time to go out to the range. Maybe next time, next video, we'll do some shooting. Until then, keep your powder dry and watch your top knot.